Hey everyone, my name is Bhavesh and uh, today I'm going to uh, talk about uh, result-focused design solutions. So, uh, how many of you are uh, here are, are developers basically, or uh, business owners? Quite a lot. Uh, how many of you are designers? Good thing. We have less uh, number of designers and more of uh, developers here and uh, this is the exactly going to help you, right? So, most of the times we kind of, you know, uh, create it ourselves like we don't need designers, etc. And that's where, uh, you know, uh, this will really help you. So uh, this is uh, the result uh, that, uh, you know, our one of our clients recently got. And this was like uh, immediate result for them. So like uh, before that, they were doing Facebook ads, they had funnels and everything. But it was not really working nicely for them. But the thing that you see on the top was the instant. So this is a kind of a spreadsheet where, uh, you know, you are seeing the revenue per day for them. Uh, you know, uh, that they were getting before. And after making few design changes and, you know, some of the changes in the funnel, uh, they instantly see the revenue spike. So that's kind of an impressive, impressive jump over there, right? So uh, there are things that uh, kind of uh, you see in uh, from daily life, you might uh, read that in article, etc. But this is where I was actually able to implement that and, and see the immediate result. So uh, even though it might sound generic, uh, this is what uh, you know uh, you can implement and it will really help you so we will see uh, one by one like you know uh, what the result focused design solutions are and then how you can use that into your business right so and the problem uh, you know is uh, like most of the web pages and uh, landing pages or even the backend are like kind of uh, designed to impress you know uh, when a developer is doing that uh, if they uh, either they don't focus on the design when they start focusing on the design uh, they kind of you know uh, start to either impress or no goals or they want to stuff everything onto one page so they have like you know we okay uh, we uh, usually i recommend like you know we can focus on one thing and they say like no uh, this is also important and that is also important and we want them to do this also and that also so they end up you know not focusing on anything and uh, the result doesn't uh, come for them right so uh, or they are not following the best best practices and the problem comes when uh, uh, developers and uh, founders have their own opinion right they have no uh, backing for that no logic for that but they prefer certain colors or certain fonts or something and uh, you know they kind of bring that uh, opinion into the thing and not optimizing the entire journey so uh, for example, if you are uh, creating a landing page, all your focus is on one, one thing. So we'll uh, look into this one after another, and then uh, we'll kind of you know, uh, go to the solution. So the common mistakes we have already seen, sorry. Uh, so what is it and why, why does it matter, right? So result-focused design is like you know, uh, created with predefined and goal, and everything on that page supports that goal. So uh, if you are, let us take an example of a landing page, like if you are creating one thing, you need to first of all define like what do I want to do the, on this particular page, this particular page, when a user visits this, you know, when he's done by the, you know, uh, with the page, by the end of that page, you know, what I want him to achieve, right? So if you have that set goal, right, you can, uh, and the importance here is like, you know, if you, if you really need to nail this down, you can have increased conversion, you know, increased conversion basically means increased revenue. Uh, it helps you achieve your business goals. Whatever, like, you know, if you are not looking for uh, uh, increased revenue, you might want uh, some additional leads or, you know, like you want additional signups or emails or whatever. And if you are looking for, you know, like to uh, design the back end part of the thing, in that case, you want the user to achieve a certain task, you know, like uh, you want him to uh, be able to complete some, some certain things, right? So that's where uh, that can really help. Uh, let's see how to do it right, okay? So these are the generic tips. But again, this worked for the, that particular client. It helped them increase their revenue. If you implement this, it will also help you increase your revenue. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, we now have a exam, you know, like uh, result for us. Uh, we have a proof for that. Uh, so start with the end goal. Like, by the, like I said, you know, by the end of the page, uh, when he's done with the page, what do you want him to do? Like, do you want him to buy something, right? Then all your focus should be on that. And whatever doesn't help with that, right, you can probably remove that. I have seen like, uh, okay, uh, so uh, one of my client, I was, uh, you know, I, uh, we were creating the page and they were like, I, I want to highlight this documentation and that documentation, the relevant products and all. 
I was like, okay, let him purchase this particular product first. If you purchase, if he purchases this, then he is going to kind of you know uh, purchase the additional product. If he is not buying this product, he is not going to buy the next one either, right? So start with the end goal. Uh, if you have uh, you know one particular goal, uh, users will kind of you know achieve that, and then they will be achieving the next thing. One page, one goal. We talked about evaluate your data. So uh, the client that we were working with. Uh, were focused on you know like so much of Facebook ad revenue and they were like we do the uh, ads right and it will work for us and it was working for them and we evaluated the data and we looked at okay uh, you have created this page but 50% of your clients are coming via mobile design okay so they are visiting your site on the mobile and um, you you haven't your even optimized the page for the mobile right so we we focused on we saw the data. And because of that data, we were able to figure out like, okay, uh, this is where the users are going, and then we kind of you know improved the page, uh, kind of you know make it mobile friendly, and that also helped us uh, you know in, in increasing the revenue immediately because now the users on the mobile was having better experience, and as a result, they were you know like uh, be able to purchase the thing. Evaluate the copy again, you know. So uh, copy is uh, as a designer, what happens like we design the page and then. Uh, the copy is kind of uh, uh, added later. Okay, this never works out because you needed to define your journey earlier, right? If you define the journey, you will know like this is what I exactly I need to talk to the user, and based on that design, the designer should be creating the design, not the other way around. Like uh, we create the design first, and then you will fit in the copy. Sometime uh, your designer will also say like you know trim this copy a little bit. You should not be doing that, right? You should be defining your copy first. Okay, evaluate your copy. This is what I, I need to tell to the user, and then the, uh, create the design around. Uh, address all their concerns, right? So there are two kind of frameworks uh, for landing pages, AIDA, PAS. So it is kind of, you know, like you grab the attention of the user first. <coughs> Sorry. So you grab the uh, attention of the user first, and uh, then you know, like uh, uh, you get them interested, you you kind of create the desire for them, and then you uh, ask them to take action, right? So this is uh, one uh, framework of uh, you know creating copy for this. Another one is PAS, which is basically problem, agitate, and solution. So uh, probably this is the framework you can use when you are kind of you know creating the landing page. Use social proof as much as you can. So uh, I have seen this, you know, like users do testimonials. We simply kind of throw some testimonials, uh, some statistics, this and that. And uh, that kind of, you know, doesn't really work out. In my opinion, testimonial is the best thing that you can uh, use on the page, but you need to do it right. So uh, with testimonials, what we do is like whatever the uh, customer has said to us, we kind of, uh, you know, uh, simply post it on the page. Instead, this testimonial could be used as a, a great copywriting tool, right? So instead of us telling them, if some end user is telling them, like we also also do kind of check the Amazon reviews before we buy, we are buying the products. Basically, we are uh, kind of confirming with the other users, like you know uh, whether I should be buying this product or not. So if you uh, use that copy to address that their kind of concerns or whatever, right? Uh, I think they can uh, you know. Uh, uh, utilize it better, and uh, testimonials can really help you uh, convert the users into a buying user. Right images could be magical. This is kind of, you know, instead of using stock images, you can probably uh, create uh, and show some screenshots, which is kind of real and uh, you know it really helps them, uh, or a video maybe. But again, not a, a video that kind of a generic. You can create show a video, which really helps the users see the end result like whatever they want to achieve, and then it could help you. And at the end of the page, you should have a powerful CTA, of course, right, which asks for the sale. So that there. Study buyer uh, psychology, again, uh, this will help you uh, understand the end user perspective. And based on that, you will kind of, if you don't end up implementing it yourself, at least you will agree with your uh, consultant or designer or something, right? And finally, uh, you need to experience what the user are experiencing. So as a developer, you might be checking your mobile uh, responsiveness onto desktop, which is fine. But uh, the pages don't exactly behave like that on mobile version. You, if you experience it in mobile, 
it will behave a little bit differently your typography will look a bit different or experience will, will be different right so if you experience it that you will be able to spot problems and if you fix that problems uh, you know it will help the, your end user and as a result you will have a better sale so again uh, uh, this is kind of you know summary of that it's easy basically right uh, you start with the goal you try to follow one page one goal analyze your data experiment and i think uh, you know that will really help you improve the landing page or you know customer experience if they have a better experience uh, you will have better sales and best better sell everybody is happy so thank you my name is bavish and uh, uh, thanks for listening to me